I'm on baby watch right now. We're, we're nine days away from having our, our, our first baby. So is there anyone have any advice for me about being a, a father or anything? Sleep a lot? It's a lot harder on the dad. Uh, what did you say about the dad? There's a lot of what around the dad? It's harder on the dad in what way? In what way? I'm serious, because I'm, I'm it's not how around the day. That was just a joke. Okay. And what did you say? Just your wife's body is going to be in a lot of need. Don't need her at all. Don't 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 need her. Don't need her. Don't need her. You mean don't say anything about her body? Don't, don't need her body. Don't need her body. So no sex is what you're saying? Okay, great. Because um, I I just want to say this right now. We are and this. My wife says okay that I say this. We are both really, um, we're not excited about having a baby. Okay? We're, actually, we're actually a little pissed off about it because you parents, you parents out there told us that when we have a baby, it is the most joyful experience ever. And I just want to say we're like, uh, we're almost there and, and so far the process has really sucked, you know? It really has. And, and you, you, the weird thing is, it's, it's not like, you know, we're having an accidental pregnancy. I mean, we spent thousands of dollars in two years on fertility to get this thing, all right? And I just feel, and, and I'm, please, parents, I, I just feel you lied to us. I mean, I really do. I really felt that you lied to us. Because um, there's so much stuff that can go wrong. Like, the other night, we're, uh, we're going to bed, my wife and I, and she, she says, I, I think... I'm, I'm, I'm in labor. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the baby right now. And I said, honey, you can't have the baby right now because it's not due until the 30th. That's the due date. And she said, well, at this point, anything can happen. We can have the ba baby at any time. And I said, oh, wait a second. I haven't cleaned the garage yet. And because it's very important that I clean the garage because I do not want to raise my child, my daughter, uh, in that kind of environment. Uh, I, I don't want her, her first sentence to be like, Daddy, why is there paint cans on the garage floor and not on, on a rack that you, know, you, you bought at, at uh, Home Depot? So the other thing you didn't tell me is, um, and I'm trying to be honest, I'm trying to be totally honest when you come up and you're, you're like, oh my God, you're, you're, you're pregnant, congratulations, I heard your wife is pregnant. And I want to be honest. And they say, how do you feel about it? And I say... I am terrified. And they say, oh, well, you don't need to be terrified. Um, you know, you'll make a great dad. I know I'll make a great dad. That's not the point. The point is, I don't know how I'm going to afford this. Okay? I, 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 I really, I don't know how I'm going to afford it. And you know what they say? They, they try to calm me down. And they say to me, with a baby comes money. And I say, when? <laughs> because I've not seen a dime yet. Okay? And I, I you know, maybe I'm a little confused here. Maybe it comes when my wife actually goes into birth, the baby comes out, and then gold coins come out like a slot machine. Or maybe, just maybe, when the baby comes out, she's holding a check in her little hand. I'm not gonna hold you for what a dollar amount, but I just you gotta reassure me that that that, that the money is coming. And the other thing, it's really weird, and, and, and I just feel lately like my life is over, you know? Has, has any fathers felt that? Like their life is over. And things that I don't even care about, like I'm like, I walk by, you know, the Briar Street Theater, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I've never gone to Blue Man Group. It's over, you know? Like, the, you know, I don't care. What, what, what about like, like, you know what, honey, we've never been to Star Rock, and now we're having a kid, and we're never going to get to go to Star Rock, you know? I was in Target the other day returning a ceiling fan. I'm like, this is the last time I'll ever be in Target. <laughs> and the other thing you guys didn't tell me, because you're big fucking liars. You're holding on all the information, right? The other thing you didn't tell me is like, I have to go back to school to have a baby. We had four weeks, we had to go to baby school. It was the most boring, traumatic thing I've ever seen. That should be a new film genre, boring and traumatic. I mean, it was just like, it was just awful. And then. Everyone's sending me books, a book about dads, a book about um, babies, the happiest baby on the block, the happiest baby at the Cheesecake Factory, whatever these books are. And they're all so confusing. They're all so, they all counter dick stuff. Like, they'll say, okay, you know, if your baby cries, let your baby just cry because she's learning how to cry. 
And then another book says if your baby's crying, just um, you know, uh, go and feed them a bottle to settle them down. Then the other book is saying, uh, you know, if your baby cries, it's probably not your baby and it got screwed up at the hospital. I mean, it's just it's crazy, this stuff. And, and, and then, because I, I don't want to do stuff perfectly, because I'm a perfectionist. And so I will call my friends that, have, that are parents and I will say to them, I'll say, wait a second. I said, you know, this book says this and this book says that. And they said, don't worry about it. They say, when, when that baby comes, and that you will, you, all you have to do is trust your instincts. And I'm like, if I trust my instincts, I'm going to give that baby away. <laughs> so, about uh, my friend, uh, uh, we've got some friends that ha uh, they are younger than me. My wife is 36, I'm 52, and uh, which you're probably saying, you know, you, you really duped me, you know? You really, you, you really lied to me, because a 52-year-old guy having a baby, that's pretty crazy. But we have younger, uh, they're friends of ours and they're much younger. And, and what I'm realizing is everyone who has babies today are much younger, except for Jeff Goldblum. Um, so um, she, she gave birth, uh, it's Carrie and Josh. Carrie gave birth uh, at, the, at Evanston Hospital, which is the same hospital we're gonna go and have our baby. And I'm like, let's go, Lauren. Let's go over there for practice. So it was the greatest thing we decided to do. It was much better than baby school, much better than the books, because it was real life experience right there. And we got in there, and it was, it was just, it was awesome. I mean, I can't tell you how great it was. Carrie was up in the hospital bed. She had the, the little baby, which is much tinier than it is on the picture of the box. It's just so small. <laughs> and uh, they had been up for 36 hours straight, but they were just... They looked so happy, like they had just given birth to baby Jesus. And um, I was just, I, I was like, I wanted to ask them all these questions because I wanted to know because soon we're going to be in the same position as they are. So I asked them about, um, you know, like, uh, when did she start having her contractions and the epidural and like how I can get a, a gluten-free meal there. I mean, it was just great. And we were feeling so we were, both of us, I looked at my wife, Lauren, and she was like, don't worry about it. I don't know why we worried about it. We can handle this. And we were feeling so good that we decided we wanted to go to Babies R Us. And I want to tell you something about Babies R Us. <laughs> Babies R Us is the worst store ever. All right? I don't care what you say. You think, oh, oh they're selling baby stuff. It's going to be fun. It's going to be amazing. It is the worst shopping experience out there. I mean, me, just pulling into the, into the parking lot, I get depressed, right? I, want, I have suicidal thoughts. It is so... I, I, I have such a problem with Babies R Us, I can't tell you. We've only been there twice, and I hate the fucking place. I can't stand it. I mean, it, it, first of all, it's overwhelming. All right. Second of all, they never have the same. It's, they never have the same stuff. They, they, stuff is always out of stock. And the worst part is the people that work there. There's these high school and college girls that they're not even pregnant. You know, and I don't care that you're not pregnant, but I mean, they're not even having sex. They don't even know. They don't even know how to have a, where a baby comes from. And they're so unhelpful. You know, and so we go in there, and we have to get a baby boppy. All right. And they don't have the baby boppy. And then we're supposed to get a baby Bjorn. They don't have a baby Bjorn. And we're supposed to get a baby thermometer, baby anal thermometer, and they have like hundreds of them. They're like giving them away. Here's the other thing about uh, Babies RS that I can't stand. It is like a vortex, something that's like a black hole, something that's supposed to take you 10 minutes in and out in your car, takes you three fucking days. And I'm talking about, like, like it is the Bermuda Triangle of the strip mall. I mean, you're, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing parents that have been missing since 1974 in there. So we get, we, get the, we get the anal thermometer, and I'm just like, we don't care at this point, because we are so high off that baby, you know, we are so high off Carrie and Josh's baby, we're like, we don't freaking care. About a week later, I'm like, I am still high from this baby. I am still high. I've done a lot of cocaine in my life, and it's never lasted this long. I am high. And so, I, so this, and, and my wife, Lauren, she's noticing. She's like, you know what? You know, you seem a lot more relaxed. You're, you're fun to be around. And it's because I was, I, I was getting, I got high off the baby. But that didn't last. It started to wear off. So I said, Lauren, 
we have got to go back to Carrie and Josh's to see the baby. Basically, I just, I, I didn't care. I wanted to get high again. I wanted to get a baby bus. I didn't care if I had to sniff a dirty, poopy diaper to get high. I wanted that feeling again, you know? And now I was starting to believe what you guys had said. There was actually some joke. So we text them. They say, hey, will you get some Middle Eastern food? I say, hey, no problem. We'll get you some Middle Eastern food. I figure some shawarma, a little, um, a little falafel. I'm down with that. So we go there. We rush over there in the car. I'm running out of the car. We're both super excited to see them again. I just want a little fix. I knock on the door. Josh opens the door. He's standing there, unshaven, and he is wearing the same uh, T-shirt and um, sweatpants and slippers that he was wearing a week ago in the hospital. And he's like, hey, why don't you come in? Sorry for the mess. Carrie's there on the couch with the baby. We've been watching CNN for 72 hours straight. And then Lauren and I look at us and like, oh shit, the pod people have came, we just missed the pod people. They've, t they've come and, and they've turned these people into zombies. So we're like, okay, let's just eat the Mediterranean food and get the hell out of here before the pod people come and get us. We made sure the baby was okay. And we left, and we got in the car, and we were so pissed off. We were so pissed off. And, and what I figured out was this joy that you guys talk about, it only lasts while you're in the hospital. You fucking liars. Thank you.